السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam His entire household We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless every single one of them And to grant every single one of them Goodness And we ask Allah to grant us goodness as well Peace and blessings upon every one of you my brothers and sisters We all know That in life One thing is certain and that is It will come to an end that is something nobody can deny. And we all know that we have to prepare for the day that we are going to leave this world. And we all do know that we are fortunate that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent to us a guide. And this guide in the form of the Quran and the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam leads us in the most balanced way throughout the path of our lives until we meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a condition that he will be pleased with us, we would have spent our time in this life having made use of whatever he has allowed us to make use of, having enjoyed within the limits that he has placed, and yet we can still achieve paradise that belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that is in fact supposed to be the ultimate aim and goal of every single one of us. But in life, you will always find different extremes. Some people will work for this worldly life in such a way that they forget that there is a day they have to die. Whereas you have another extreme where people will live in such a way that they forget that they are in this world. They forget for a moment that they have rights that need to be fulfilled of their spouses and family members. And they have people whom they need to interact with in the most beautiful manner. So sometimes on that extreme, you find people have a misnotion and misunderstanding that if you would like to be religious, you only need to spend your day fulfilling salah in seclusion without interacting with anyone in one corner of your own until the day you meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then you have the correct path. You have the middle path. And that is the path taught to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, brought to us by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says quite clearly, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ If you take a look at Surah Al-Baqarah, even though the verse may have been revealed on a different occasion, but the meaning of it is so broad, Allah says, and in this way, we have made you an ummah or a nation that is in the middle, that is very balanced. Every one of us needs to ask ourselves, how balanced am I? Is the scale that I have lopsided or is it heavier on one side than the other? If it is the case, let it be slightly heavier on the spiritual religious side, bearing in mind that we have rights to be fulfilled for us, upon us. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make that easy for us. Why I say it's important for us to ask the question. My brothers and sisters, the material world is so beautiful. When you look at it, the glamour, the glitter, everything shines, the gold, the motor vehicles, the technology, whatever else there is, subhanallah. Amazing, you find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has tested us by beautifying this whole world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has tested us in a huge way by beautifying this world so that when we look at the world, we will know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept for us an examination in it in a way that if we are to abstain from it completely, we will fail. And if we are to engage in it completely, then too we will fail. This is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has definitely kept as a test for every single one of us. So if we are to look at the tests of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will find that the beauty of this world is part of the test of Allah. Not that we divorce ourselves completely 
from whatever is in this world, but that we understand the balance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked us to maintain in order to succeed. I give you an example. If for no reason a person does not want to marry, and there's no acceptable reason, and this would exclude those whereby there may be an acceptable reason, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. I record, I recall reading the books where if a person's temper is so bad that they know they will just be an oppressive person, it's wrong for them to get married. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. Subhanallah. Imagine, to control your temper is one of the conditions of getting married. My brothers and sisters, in marriage, make sure that you calm down. Cool off, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Some of these issues, when we talk about bad habits, you can't say, I am following the middle path. Sometimes I have a bad habit and sometimes I don't have it. That is not the middle path. The middle path is to eradicate that which is bad and to work towards that which is good. But the example I'm giving, if a person for no reason does not marry, he is fulfilled. One of the main reasons why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put him on the face of the earth or her. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us not only to reproduce, but to reproduce quality more than quantity. Remember this. It is very important. Sometimes people say, you know what, uh, we should be having 10 children each, 20 children each. The answer to that is, do you know what, if you are prepared to look after them, and if you are going to give them a decent good upbringing, then alhamdulillah. But if you are not going to be present, such that your children will have a deficit of parental care, one parent is missing, both parents are missing, there is not enough care, not enough attention, did you fulfill your right? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. So this is why we say it is important for us to know the balance. Some people say, I don't want to work because the sustenance written for me will come down even if it means through the ceiling. Because I believe, I have full conviction that my sustenance is written with Allah. Subhanallah, once and this is an example that is cited on many occasions when a man used that as a cheap excuse in order to get away from a certain crime he had committed in the face of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anh, then the Amir al-Mu'mineen says, you know what, you want us not to penalize you just because you claim it was part of your destiny. Well, it was part of your destiny to be penalized as well. So this is why it would have been part of the destiny of a person who perhaps is so lazy that they don't even want to work for that particular person not to achieve and not to earn. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the true balance. So we will work, we will eradicate laziness, but we will know, never ever dive into that which is haram solely because it is a lucrative deal. When you know, I will earn millions in this wrong way, don't worry, those millions, if they are written for you, there is a permissible way that they will come to you, you abstain from that haram. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease and goodness. So, we as business people, it is wrong for us to do that which is unacceptable in the name of trying to earn a living. People do a lot of things and then they come to you and they would say, it's so hard to live as a Muslim, I'm sure Allah will forgive me. Imagine. If that is a statement we need to understand, there is a mistake happening. We need to make sure we realize that Allah has kept for us these tests. If I can afford the motor vehicle of my choice, the one I love the most, and I have the means, and I have the capacity, and I have not usurped the wealth of anyone, and I am a person who has really worked so hard to earn, then by the will of Allah, it will not be wrong for me to go ahead and purchase the vehicle. No, it won't be wrong. But if the vehicle is my main aim, such, uh, such that I have aimed at buying a certain car, I'm giving you an example, or say a phone, or say anything else, a house, and I work so hard morning to evening to earn the wealth in a way that come time for salah, salah is secondary. It gets missed, no problem, for as long as my job is not gone. My deal is not gone. Come time for splitting halal and haram, we could not be bothered for as long as at the end of the month or year, I can afford what I was dreaming of. If that was the case, we become little Qaruns. And do you know what happened to Qarun? He was one on one of the extremes. He lived for the world in a way that he forgot Allah. He knew Allah existed, but he ignored Allah. He took Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of the equation. And this was the loss. This was the loss of Qarun. If you take a careful look, Allah says to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, what amazing verses recorded where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَابْتَغِ فِي مَا آتَاكَ اللَّهُ الدَّارَ الْآخِرَةِ وَلَا تَنْسَ نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا وَأَحْسِنْ 
كما أحسن الله إليك ولا تبغ الفساد في الأرض إن الله لا يحب المفسدين. The message of Allah subhanahu wa taala to this man who had so much, he had so much wealth that even the keys of the treasures, just the keys. To be lifted by a group of people was quite difficult. That's how much wealth he had. And Allah says, whatever we have given you, use it to earn your paradise. Use it to build your palace of the akhirah, of the hereafter. The message is for us all. Use whatever capacity Allah has given you, your health, your wealth, your children, your relatives, whatever else it is. In order for you to earn paradise, in order for you to build the paradise, a lot of us sometimes are looking for a home. We buy a piece of land, we build a home and or a house as we want, forgetting that we haven't yet done anything to build the house of the akhirah. So we need to strike the balance. We will build the house, we will live in it. Perhaps our children will enjoy what we have invested for them. But remember, the biggest investment is that for the akhirah, for the life after death. We are people who are religious. We belong to a religion, to a deen. We belong to Islam. We cannot be from amongst those who forget that even for a split moment. We have belief. And this is the difference between us and the likes of Qarun. So Allah says to Qarun that you should earn your paradise through working towards it by that which we have granted you. And do not forget do not forget your portion of the dunya as well. And this is the balance that we are talking about. On one hand we are building the akhirah, and on the other hand we enjoy within the limits that which Allah has given us in the dunya. You go on a holiday with your family, nobody says no. But remember, that must not make you miss your salah. You do not compromise your dress code. You do not compromise halal and haram. But you can enjoy. You can go on those rides, mashallah. You can go and have a lot of fun with your children, let them grow up. Some people believe that if I am religious, I cannot go on a holiday. Allahu Akbar. That is the other extreme. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. The children need to grow up. Perhaps your best holiday may be, and think about it very carefully, for an Umrah. Where the children can grow up, nurturing themselves spiritually as well as religiously, and at the same, same time, enjoying the outing with you by the will of Allah. So you achieve spirituality and so have they, and you've also gone on that plain journey, and you've also, mashallah, embarked on that refreshment of your mind and so on, you come back a week later, two weeks later, you have gone out on holiday. Coincidentally, I think the holidays have started today. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take you wherever you plan to go. And I hope you planned to take your children out somewhere because part of the balance of a Muslim's life is to plan for your children, to be there for them, for your spouse and so on. It is not good enough to be at work all day, every day, throughout the year, without a break. Or it is not good enough to be a person who divorces himself from his family using religion as an excuse. No. Part of your religion is to fulfill the rights of your family members, your wife, your children, and in the case of the women, your husband, your brothers and sisters, your parents and so on. This is part and parcel of Islam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا تنسى نصيبك من الدنيا Do not forget your portion of this world. وأحسن كما أحسن الله إليك Do good as Allah has done good to you. Look at us, we are seated here, calmness in one of the most beautiful masjids in our whole region. And we have so much of peace and tranquility, mashallah. Allah has blessed us in more than a million ways. How have we reached out to those who do not have the same blessing? How have I reached out? It's a question each one of us needs to ask ourselves. This is the way a true Muslim should be thinking. Allah says, وَأَحْسِنْ كَمَا أَحْسَنَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْكَ and do good. Reach out to people in the way Allah has reached out to you. Allah has been good to you. He's been kind to you. How kind are you to others? Whether it is materialistically or whether it is your character and conduct. Sometimes we fail in one of them and sometimes we fail in both. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala humble us. The more you have in terms of material wealth, the more humble you should be, the more charitable you should be. Bearing in mind it is better for you to build your palace in the akhirah than to leave your children with wealth that they are going to scramble over. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us strike the balance between the two. And this is why Allah says thereafter, وَلَا تَبْغِ الْفَسَادَ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُفْسِدِينَ Do not feel the need to 
kumur or to cause corruption or to involve in corruption and that which is chaotic on earth. Sometimes what happens, a person wants to earn, so they use corrupt means in order to earn. And sometimes a person has the wealth, and in order to be able to control everything, they use that wealth in the wrong way. Because I'm a rich man, I need a say. Because I'm a rich man, nothing will happen against my wombs and fancy. If that is our attitude, if that is the attitude we have, we need to panel beat it, to change it a little bit for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, bearing in mind my brothers and sisters. The ultimate, when I get to my grave, you will not be there. When you get to your grave, I will not be there. My wealth is not going to be in my grave. Whatever I have done is not going to be in my grave besides the good that I have packed away one after the other. How much wealth I spent in charity, it will definitely be coming to my assistance so long as I did it sincerely for the sake of Allah. If I have spent my wealth in order to show that I am the big boss, then I will be shown as the big boss in the world. When I get to the Akhirah, we will be asked, weren't you made to be seen as the big boss? The answer is yes. Well, then you used your wealth for a reason, and that reason was expired. There is no other reason. But if you use it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when will you get to see it? You will get to see it in the Akhirah. Here, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu looks at Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sitting on the floor, a tatty mat, subhanallah, and he starts crying. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asks him, Oh Umar, you are crying? He says, I am not crying for any other reason, but I see you, O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, are far higher than Kisra and Qaysar and the leaders of the world. They sit on huge thrones and you are sitting on a mat, yet we all know that you are far higher than them. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, would you not be happy if I told you that for them is that in the dunya and for us is the same and even better in the akhirah? He says, O oh Messenger, that is enough. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So remember, my brothers and sisters, what you have in this world is a test for you. May Allah grant us ease. And the test. The ultimate passing will determine whether we enter paradise or not. And this is why, spice up your day. Spice up your day by engaging in lots of repentance. Allahu Akbar. Throughout the day, every little while, ask Allah, Oh Allah, forgive my shortcomings. Oh Allah, do not leave me alone even for a split moment. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to say, Ya Hayyu, Ya Qayyum, Bi Rahmatika Astaghith. Oh you who is all alive. Oh you who is all alert, who never sleeps. I am calling out to your mercy. I am seeking desperate help from your mercy, by your mercy, through your mercy. O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aslih li sha'ni kullah. Make good for me all my affairs. Wala takilni ila nafsi tarfata ain. And don't leave me alone, even for a split moment. You guide me, you be with me, you help me, you assist me. Your mercy descend on me. Do not leave me alone for a split moment, O oh Allah. This was the dua of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let us learn this dua. Let us use it. Let us make it on a regular basis. That will help you develop your link with Allah. Because if you utter these type of supplications with a beautiful intention, it will definitely impact upon your life positively. My brothers and sisters, like I said, we have one extreme where people have forgotten that they have Allah to return to. And you have the other extreme where people use religion in order to oppress other people. People use religion to oppress their wives, to be absent from their family members wholesale, completely. And they say, it is my religion. Allahu Akbar. These are two extremes. Both are wrong. You fulfill the right. Do you know the narration of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? When the muhajireen and the sahaba, the companions had entered from Makkatul Mukarramah to Medina Munawwara, and there was a large number of them, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam decided to foster a relation of brotherhood between some of those families, and that was known as al muakha something great in the history of Islam. And what actually happened was, two of those who were put together in that union, one was Salman al-Farisi, radiallahu anhu, and one of them was Abu Darda, radiallahu anhu. So Salman al-Farisi radiallahu anhu, he notices that Abu Darda radiallahu anhu, his wife had no importance given to her looks and her appearance. She was not bothered at all. So he questioned. 
And obviously there was a brotherhood that was fostered. It was a relation that was considered a solid, powerful relation in the deen. So they were no longer the strangers that they were. They were actually brothers in what was known as Mu'akha. So when he inquired, he found the answer from this woman. He says, you know your brother Abu Darda, he doesn't have any interest in this world. He shows no interest in me. He's hardly ever there and so on. And the statement respectfully worded, but the meaning it gave was that this man is so much into the deen that he's got no time for his family. Now this was a sahabi, a companion of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so Salman al-Farisi radiallahu anhu decided to watch Abu Darda with the idea of helping him and guiding him. Having been with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam much longer. So at night he noticed that Abu Darda radiallahu anhu got up to pray in the first part of the night. So he says, go to sleep. Abu Darda immediately obliged because he knows Salman al-Farisi radiallahu anhu knows more than me. So he went off to bed. A little while later he got up. Salman al-Farisi remained. He says, go back to bed. When a third of the night was remaining, then Salman al-Farisi radiallahu anhu gets up Abu Darda radiallahu anhu and he says, now you can get up and you can fulfill your prayer. And oh Abu Darda, I want to tell you that you have a right that you need to fulfill the rights of your spouse. You need to fulfill the rights of your body for the rest. You need to fulfill the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And every single thing has rights over you. Fulfill every right and give it in due measure. So Abu Darda radiallahu anhu in the morning, because now it is tough. Imagine you're reading salah and someone comes to you and says, stop, relax, take a break. And then a while later you're starting again and they come to you and say, hey, relax, take a break. You would perhaps be irritated. Who are you? I'm trying to gain closeness to Allah here. I'm trying to read my salah and you're telling me to go back to bed. Subhanallah or to take a rest. So Abu Darda radiallahu anhu, he could not wait to get to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and narrate the story. When he narrated the story that look I tried to read salah and this is what happened. Abu uh, Salman al-Farisi radiallahu anhu told me go back. You know your wife has a right, go back. And then I went back to bed and I came back a while later and he said the same thing until he got me up later on. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then said the famous words, very powerful, very short. Sadaqa Salman. Salman has spoken the truth. Amazing. What does that mean? When Salman radiallahu anhu said that your wife has a right over you, meaning your family. Your body has a right over you. Your Rabb has a right over you. And everything has a right over you in due measure. So give it in due measure. So the Prophet ﷺ confirmed that what Salman did was correct. Now I come back to our lives. Like I said, on one hand we have people who've forgotten Allah and they want to earn and earn to the degree that mashallah they may have achieved so much in the worldly life. But they have forgotten that they have a maker to go to. So when they die, the world might remember them as a person who was rich, a person who contributed technology or whatever else to the world. But to be honest, they are lonely in that grave because if you have invented an, a, a phone or whatever else, that invention is not going to come with you in your grave unless you have helped for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, bearing in mind that you have to contribute to humanity in the biggest way possible for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you've invented something grand, if Allah is in the equation, you have achieved. The minute you remove Him from the equation, you have lost. This is something common. But on the other hand, my brothers and sisters, we have people, and as I've said, we have people who claim to be so religious that using religion they oppress people. You don't know. They belittle people. They start saying, you know what, this man is no one. This one is going to Jahannam. This one is not going to be given the mercy of Allah. My brother, that is not religion. You are assuming the role of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today we speak about associating partners with Allah, which we know is unacceptable. What about associating yourself as a partner with Allah because you think you're too holy or too pious? Come on. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. We are human beings. We are all in need of the mercy of Allah. A person whom we might look at as someone who hasn't achieved anything in the, in the deen or in the religion might overtake us towards the end of his life and we may have gone far backwards towards the end of ours. Who knows? It's in the hand of Allah. So this is why never ever get excited with the fact that you worshipped Allah a lot. The more you worship Allah, the more humble it should make you. This is where spirituality comes in. This is where the beautiful feeling of religion comes in. And this is the true religion of Islam. That which is a balance between, that which is a balance between 
living in the dunya and preparing for the akhirah. I hope and I pray that the few words I have said can help us enjoy the life we are in in a way that we do not displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be there for your family. Go and earn, but remember, the earnings should not be such that you've forgotten your children, you never spend time with them. They grew up like wild grass, rather than people who are nurtured with the qualities that Allah has bestowed upon you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all good qualities, and may He grant us paradise ultimately. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad.